Thanks for the response, Laura Layla. Very good uh, response, actually. Um, yeah, I, uh, I get what you're saying um, about uh, dealing with the disconnect between what we understand with our emotions and that which we understand with our intuition, as you mentioned, or even with our intellect. Uh, these are not always the same thing, and you know, your typical neurotic is, is such a person. You know, they don't, even though they may consciously believe in a lot of things or not believe in a lot of things, their subconscious or whatever you want to call it, that other aspect of themselves does believe it. Um, or they tell themselves that they don't, that they do believe something and the subconscious doesn't. Uh, it's an interesting disconnect. And it's not a new idea, it's an old one. Um, I think uh, it was explored rather well, actually, <clears throat> in that famous book by Hermann Hesse, the, uh, the Steppenwolf, where he was a guy about my age attempting to come to terms with the fact that he was a mass of contradictions. Um, I think maybe it's a symptom of males my age, maybe women, I don't know, uh, that we get to a certain stage in our life and we, um, we understand that we are what we are and, you know, your, your contradictions uh, are part of you and maybe as a younger man you spent a lot of time ridiculing people for being that way, uh, only to see over the years that <laughs> you're like that yourself. <clears throat> um, but again, that's, you know, that's just sort of <clears throat> the psychology, I guess, of aging, or the psychology of male middle age, I don't know. Um, but um, it's uh, explored in many other uh, ways as well, and one of the things that I like is the fact that um, you bring <clears throat> psychology into this. Um, I'm, I've never studied psychology myself, that's probably obvious, but I do um, have the opinion that nothing should be excluded from one's own personal philosophy and psychology is definitely something that I would not exclude. Um, uh, dealing with things like how do we relate to our emotions, how do we relate to our subconscious, that kind of thing. How do we analyze our own self, how do we deal with self-awareness, how do we explore or enhance self-awareness. Um, that to me is part and parcel of philosophy. I like the ancient definition of philosophy, which is just kind of love of learning. Um, I like the idea of it just uh, being, I uh, hate this word, but a holistic thing where you come at reality, you come at your position in reality from every conceivable angle. You don't have to say that there are compartments of knowledge, like there's philosophy in one compartment and there's logic in another compartment and there's music in another compartment and there's uh, art in another compartment and, you know, all this kind of thing. Um, you know, <clears throat> and again, this, is not, this isn't really a new idea either. It's your, you know, your stereotypical Renaissance man or woman is supposed to be well-rounded in all things. And uh, the implication is, of course, among... Uh, you know, your uh, well-rounded individual is that the constituent parts are at peace with each other, or at least they've got a modus vivendi. And um, anger is a really interesting skeleton key to sort of explore that, because anger, I find, is the one emotion that tends to disrupt all the other ones. Um, although I'm sure that, you know, taken to excess, any emotion can, you know, undermine... Um, one's balance, I guess, one's sense of keeping the compartments um, in tuned with each other or uh, non-hostile with each other, integrating the contradictory elements, assuming that they are strictly contradictory, um, <clears throat> because, as was implicit in your title, is... If human beings are by nature contradictory, are we contradictory? Because it's it's not a contradiction to be human and to be contradictory. <laughs> Interesting how this goes, isn't it? 